Well, I bet you didn't see this coming. Hello everybody, and on this wonderful Wednesday afternoon, I am bringing you my first bonus video. For those that don't know, I'm a pretty big fan of the challenge, and with season 37 premiering tonight, called Spies, Lies, and Allies, what an odd name by the way, I wanted to throw something together to commemorate the start of the season. While deciding what I wanted to do for the video, I thought back to how I first heard of the show. It all started with this meatball here, Josh Martinez. I saw he was going to be on season 33 of the challenge, and immediately I was like, What the hell? On a show that I knew was about intense competition, I was curious as to why they chose Josh of all people from Big Brother 19 to compete, especially when Josh's competitive performance was overshadowed by the likes of Paul, Cody, and even Mark on his season. Regardless though, it piqued my interest, and since then I've gone back and watched most of the past seasons, and I really enjoy the show. I realized though, as I slowly started to become more and more ingrained in the challenge community, that a large number of people were not the biggest Josh fans, and they didn't appreciate what he brought to the show. I've also seen a lot of people who don't watch Big Brother question, how did Josh win a strategic and socially driven game like Big Brother? So I decided to answer that question for you all today. How did Josh win Big Brother 19? What we're going to do today is explore Josh's game from start to finish and hope to come up with a good enough explanation as to how Josh beat the most dominant player of all time at that point. This is the story of the unlikeliest winner ever, Josh Martinez. I'm Big Brother, season 19 winner. I don't back down, I hold my ground, and I fight for what I want. If anyone's in my way, uh, they're because I'm playing no games this season. We all know I've had a history of poking fun at Josh lightheartedly in past videos, but truth be told, Josh entertains the hell out of me. I know Josh is not everyone's cup of tea, and I get that. I used to not be the biggest Josh fan either, but over time, I've started to appreciate what Josh brought to the show. I think that there's one thing most of us can agree on. Everyone has an opinion on Josh. He's polarizing and loud, but he brings a lot to the drama and entertainment side of things. I genuinely don't think that there is anyone out there who could convince me that Big Brother 22 was better by having Memphis on instead of Josh. With that, I think it's time we get this journey started. Josh Martinez entered the Big Brother house as an eager, loud and proud player. He was 23 years old and worked in hair care sales in Homestead, Florida. What about you do you think will annoy the other house guests? Myself. <laughs> I'm in your face, boom! He walked into the house with 15 other new players and was surprised to see Paul, the runner up from the prior season, Big Brother 18, come into the game as a twist as the sole returning player. Right off the bat, I'm going to mention that Paul changed their pronouns to they, them. So for those that are unaware, that is why I will refer to Paul as such. Anyways, Paul had to give eight of the new players safety, and Josh was not among the players to receive a friendship bracelet from Paul, meaning Josh was in danger of going home on the first night. But he still made a deal with Paul to work together, and Josh was luckily able to earn his safety on the first night through a competition. At the first eviction, Josh voted to send home Christmas, but was unsuccessful as Cameron went home instead. After the vote, Josh was already not feeling good about his spot in the house, so at the first HOH competition, when an opportunity presented itself for Josh to become immune for the first week, he took it immediately, which punished the rest of his team by ensuring none of them would become HOH. Although at face value, this seems like a pretty bad idea to piss off and screw over his three teammates, it ended up being Josh's saving grace, as Cody, the eventual winner of the first HOH, had to nominate five people throughout the week, and Josh surely would have been one of them if he wasn't safe. Throughout the first couple weeks, Josh quickly made an enemy out of Cody and Cody's showman's Jessica, picking arguments with them often throughout the house. After Jillian was evicted in the first week, Paul won the next HOH and nominated Josh as a pawn. Luckily for Josh, he seemed to have earned Paul's trust over the first couple weeks, and when Paul won the veto, they took Josh off. Josh, safe as can be, called Cody a loser as Paul nominated Cody in Josh's place, overall just making himself a big target if Jessica and Cody ever came into power again. But it was funny. I enjoyed the penitas for no reason, especially since nowadays, everyone just plays so nice and friendly. What? I could call you a coward, a victim, a loser, but you're a meatball. You suck, you're a loser, you lied on everybody, and then you still continue to lie on me. So says you, Josh. I can't wait till you hop your ass on out of there to Julie. Cody was then evicted, and with him out the door, things didn't seem so bad for Josh. Josh was able to coast through week three as Alex won HOH, and Dominique was evicted. All was well. Until Cody walked right back through the front door after winning the Battle Back competitions, and to top it off, Jessica won the next HOH and nominated Josh and Ramsey's, with Josh being the clear target to go home. After Jessica won the veto as well and didn't use it, it looked like Josh could be going home. 
But once again, Josh's unwavering loyalty that he showed DePaul in the first few weeks, as well as his willingness to be loud and create fights, proved to be a saving grace, as Paul was absolutely running the game and decided it's much better for their game to keep Josh. So they were easily able to flip the house and send Ramsey's home in a vote of 7-3, to three, blindsiding Jessica and Cody. It's not a good commitment. There's nothing kind of more sneaky about that kid. You know what I'm saying? I, dude, I mean, we have his game on, on watch lock. We don't have that with Ramsey's. By a vote of seven to three, Josh, you are safe, which means Ramsey's, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Paul once again won the following HOH, so Josh knew he was safe for the week. After Paul tried to take a shot at Cody and Jessica, but failed due to a twist that stopped the eviction, we head into week six, or what I like to call the true start to Josh's win. It's important as we enter this mid-game area that basically the entire house was against Cody and Jessica and looking at Mark and Elena afterwards. Paul systematically had been running the show with pairs, Matt and Raven, Alex and Jason, and Josh and Christmas. Josh and Christmas had been slowly bringing together their relationship over the past few weeks up until the point that they were sort of a duo, but probably the least threatening duo of all the pairs in the house due to Josh's current position as a possible meat shield and Christmas's broken foot, severely limiting her physical capabilities for the entirety of the summer. Back to week six though. After weeks of close calls and scraping by, Josh entered the mid-game with his eyes on the prize. With Jessica and Cody both remaining safe after using the halting hex, the week six HOH comp started and you'll never guess who won. Josh Meatball Martinez. Congratulations, Josh. You are the new head of household. You have to. Kevin, you're reading it. Kevin's reading it. I can't read it. You have to. You have to. What do you mean Kevin's reading it? Although the entire house was wanting Jessica out, Josh was very wary of Elena and wanted her gone first. After Jessica failed to win the veto though, it was pretty obvious that she was going to go home. So Josh chose to have some fun and antagonize Cody and Jessica in the kitchen because that's just what Josh does. It was absolutely remarkable how much Cody hated Josh. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone hate another house guest as much as Cody hated Josh, especially around this time. But can you spell evicted? Today's not the day. Listen <laughs> <laughs> here, you piece of I swirl around here with your fat body, acting like you're tough. Okay, you guys are making it real personal. When I'm not in personal, the mood today. I'm, I'm literally not in the mood today. So just don't speak to me. Don't address me. I don't give a about you. I swear I'm going to make the whole world know how big of a piece of you are. Argue. Stick to it. Let's Otherwise, have a conversation. We can That's have a it. I'm not gonna argue. That's it. Then don't. I'm not trying to fight. Then, then don't come into the room and start talking to me. I was apologize. Just, I'm just apologize for what? Another thing we see here about Josh is that he can get emotional. After getting into his confrontation with Cody, he cried in the HOH room. People often make fun of that, but I don't think showing your emotions after intense interactions is a bad thing, even if Josh brought it upon himself. Josh may be a lot of things: a meatball, a king, whatever you want. But one thing that he's not is scared. He speaks his mind and brings about a lot of confrontation. This right here is a hidden strong suit in Josh's game. If he doesn't like you, he's not going to talk bad about you behind your back. He's going to say it to your face. Well, he's probably going to say it behind your back too, but the point is, he's upfront about it and not sneaky. Plus, Josh invoking these fights is really good TV. Do you know how much I would give to have arguments like that again this season? Back to Josh though. Not being one to back off, he doubles down and continues with the pots and pans and the yelling all the way up until Jessica's eviction. Say what you will, but Josh was finally able to break apart the Jody duo for good, something that Paul couldn't do on two separate tries. Hard to argue against that being Chad behavior. Jokes aside, it wasn't Paul's fault that Jody kept staying, but it was a good thing for Josh's resume to be the one to split them apart for good, right before the jury phase started. Which, I should mention, the jury phase now started, so every evicted house guest will now be voting for the winner. So, the next few weeks for Josh were easy. His allies Alex and Jason traded HOHs and got Cody and Elena evicted, two people that Josh were targeting. With Christmas winning HOH afterwards, Josh was set up yet again for an easy week. Outside of antagonizing Mark for the week, Josh, Christmas, and Paul were able to solidify a final three deal. What's great for Josh is that because he had pissed countless houseguests off and didn't seem to be respected, Paul figured their best shot was to go against Josh at the end, putting Josh in an extremely good position. Even other duos in the house structure wanted to take Josh to the final four because he was
was the safest bet for them to win the game. Little did they know, though, that the meatball was slowly stirring his pots and pans. And the more enemies he made in the game, the better shot he had of sitting in the final two chairs. Typically, making so many enemies is not good for your game, especially for when you want to win in the end. But Big Brother 19 is no ordinary season. It's weird. It's one of the only times where Josh's type of playstyle actively helped his game as opposed to hurting it. Anyways, Mark ended up being evicted, and the final eight HOH went underway, officially marking the halfway point in the game in terms of players. Jason came up victorious once again in the HOH comp. Yeah! What the and he and Alex decided to target the Matt and Raven duo, leaving Josh and Christmas sitting comfortably in the middle. After Jason won the veto as well, it became apparent that this was probably the best thing for Josh's game. Matt and Raven was about to be evicted. The power duo of Alex and Jason had been running rampant, winning comp after comp, pinning a huge target on their back, and Josh was sitting pretty, slowly running out of people to piss off in the house, so his target was remaining extremely low. Matt was eventually evicted, and we get down to the final seven. After Paul managed to get literally every single person to throw the competition until it was down to Josh and Christmas, Josh false started, leading to Christmas, the girl with the broken foot, to win the sprinting competition. With his number one girl winning HOH, Josh was yet again poised to be safe for the week. With Paul convincing Christmas to secretly target Alex and Jason, and with Josh then seeing Paul manipulate the hell out of Alex and Jason afterwards, Josh came to the realization that Paul was extremely deadly in this game and was playing incredibly hard for the win. It also became very apparent to everyone watching the show that Paul intended on taking Josh and Christmas to the end. Christmas was entirely under Paul's spell, so there wasn't much hope for her. But Josh was starting to see what was really going on and broke out of his Paul trance. Before I came into this house, I said I was going to win. Paul has played the best game this season, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. So if I have the opportunity to take the shot, I'm going to take it. One thing that Josh had started enacting around this point was utilizing his goodbye messages to own up to his game and subtly throw Paul under the bus, erasing a lot of the work Paul put into BSing the house guests as they were walking out the front door. This is one specific time that I can say, without a doubt, Josh outplayed Paul. There were very few, if any, times that a player was outplaying Paul during season 19, but leave it to the most unassuming of them all, King Josh, to be the one to figure it out. So, when Paul won the veto and came up with an elaborate plan to blindside Jason without getting any blood on their hands, Josh initially fought back against Paul, claiming it wasn't the best for the group to do that. But when Josh didn't get his way, he made sure to get a leg up somewhere. So when Jason was blindsided after Paul orchestrated a tie vote to make Jason and Alex think that Paul was still on their good side, Josh made sure to expose Paul's entire plan to Jason in his goodbye message, making Jason lose a lot of respect for Paul, and in turn, making it more likely that he'd vote for Josh to win at the end. Paul and Alex and I made a pact to make it uh, a competition to the end. Whistle up, my man. Paul came up with an elaborate plan in order to get you out. And I've been in a final three alliance with Christmas and Paul for a while now. I hope that you can respect the game move. And I've grown to love you as a person. But for my game, I had to let you go. Jason, if you're seeing this right now, you left me with a bunch of counterfeits. I think you know how hard we've worked, and I wanted to say thanks for listening to me and trusting me when not everybody else would. Now, the final six, with some gears turning in Josh's head, it's time we enter the end game. Julie shocks everyone by revealing that the final six is going to be the second double eviction of the summer. Right after Jason is evicted, Paul stages a fight with Josh in order to throw Alex off the scent of them all working together, even though Josh thought the plan was a little weird. You guys, in her head, she's like, Paul's fighting with him. Then I don't need to. He's fighting my battle. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. We just need to fake the funk, bro. Good plan, or you you think it's weird? I think it's weird. Do you have another option? No. Okay, then. Alex, after having her closest ally Jason leave the game, came in clutch and won the HOH. Josh, being one of the people to send Jason home, was potentially in the hot seat. But luckily, since Alex thought that Paul was still on her side, and due to the fake fight Paul had with Josh, Paul was able to talk Alex into nominating Kevin and Rachel for eviction somehow. At the veto, we may have gotten my favorite Josh moment of the season. Well, who am I kidding? Every Josh moment is my favorite Josh moment. But anyways, Josh comes in clutch and thinks he's won the veto, but he doesn't realize that he only completed the first part of the comp and still needs to run back to the start and press a button to secure the win. While Josh is just standing around celebrating, Alex also finishes the first part, but she too doesn't realize that she needs to go back and press the button because she thinks that Josh already won. Luckily for Josh, Julie yells at him to run back and he's able to beat Alex there, but that would have just been so funny if Alex knew what was going on the whole time and managed to steal the win from him. Josh with four lines! You have to run back and push your button! You must run back and push your button! 
Josh to win it. Alex with four lines. But with Josh securing the veto, he secured his spot in the final five and also earned a bit of power for the double eviction. Alex told Josh to not use the veto and to vote out Kevin. So Josh decided not to use the veto and to vote out Kevin. However, that's not what Paul wanted. So Paul and Christmas voted out Raven and she was sent home by a vote of two to one in sixth place. After an emotion-filled hour, Josh lost it and was a mess. But that's okay. Kings cry. It looks like Paul is crying too until... You guys stay for a second. This kid goes from crying, where I'm thinking that he's emotional, to instantly smiling. Because he's happy that the plan worked exactly how he wanted it to work. I felt like I just saw the devil or something. I was like... Like I was saying earlier, Josh was an emotional wreck, and Paul wanted him to win the next HOH. At first, Josh did not want to win because he didn't want to take the shot at Alex, but he ended up coming around to it because he knew it was best for his game. Josh told Christmas that he wasn't doing so well both emotionally and mentally, and if he was going to win HOH, he didn't want to blindside Alex. Christmas then low-key confronted Josh about him planting seeds against Paul, trying to make them out as the bad guy to the others in the house. But Josh lied and said his loyalty was unwavering to Christmas and Paul, and he would never do that. I'm never turning against them, okay? Never turning against each other. After his conversations with Paul on Christmas, the final five HOH starts. Josh was on the fence about winning, but knew it was in his best interest to win, so A, he could continue staying loyal to his group, so they therefore maintained their loyalty with Josh, and B, so he couldn't be backstabbed somehow, especially since Christmas informed Josh that word on the street is that Josh is becoming a bit flaky with his loyalty to Paul. Did I just make those reasons up? Maybe. But given the events in the house, it's totally possible he was thinking that, and it was crucial for Josh to show some loyalty to his group through his actions, because Paul and Christmas were starting to become a bit worried about Josh going rogue. So Josh made up his mind and decided to gun for the HOH. The competition begins, and it's a mental comp. Josh, being the Einstein that he is, was able to pull it out, winning HOH for the second time this season and guaranteeing his spot in the final four. Yeah, some things I'm not, I'm not, a, I don't have an IQ of Einstein. So Josh, you're the head of household! Yeah! <laughs> yes! In the aftermath of winning the HOH, Josh was upstairs in the HOH room seriously considering taking a shot at Paul. After running through the numbers, he realized it was far too risky and he probably wouldn't even have the votes to send Paul home, so he took the shot at Alex by nominating her. Josh was still extremely emotional, but he didn't let it affect his decisions, which is a positive to his game. After an awkward, semi-joking threat from Christmas, You don't think that I would hide around a rock and strike the out of you? If you cross me, I will murder families. <laughs> you just scared me. Suck it up, let's go eat. Okay. The veto comp took place, and Paul won. Paul didn't use the veto, and Josh casted the tiebreaker vote to send Alex home in fifth place. Now, entering the top four, Josh is getting so close to the end. Unable to compete in the final four HOH though, Josh had to stand by as Paul decimated the competition, winning the HOH and guaranteeing their spot on finale night. The initial nominations at the final four don't matter as it all comes down to the veto, so it's not a bad thing that Josh was nominated alongside Kevin, with Kevin being the target. Josh was in a good spot here, as Josh was only in danger if Kevin won the veto, which, given his track record, was not likely. Kevin ended up getting eliminated early on in the comp and Paul pulled out the veto win, their eighth competition win of the summer. With Josh left on the block come eviction night, he was left vulnerable and could have been in danger. However, his relationship with Christmas helped make her decision easy as she was the only player to cast a vote and she evicted Kevin and brought Josh along to the final three. Only one more eviction left until the end. So Kevin has been evicted and that means one thing, baby. I'm in final three, final three. This is the best feeling in the world. <laughs> You all played yourselves! Oh my god! This is awesome! This is awesome! Decision. So. Wait! Are you serious? I got excited! No way! We got lobster! Oh my god! Oh my god! We got calamari! Ah! <laughs> Now with the final three set in place, us as the viewers got to listen in on the jury for a bit and see how they're doing, and the jurors seemed divided. 
Two thirds of them hated everyone in the house, while the other third was still in love with Paul. The main thing here is that everyone in the jury was realizing that Paul was the biggest game player and manipulator in the house, but it wasn't going over well with some of the jurors. While Paul was trying to fool everyone in the jury house by lying to them on their way out, pretending to still be loyal, Josh was there in his goodbye messages to let them all know that Paul knew and orchestrated everything that was happening, which left an extremely sour taste in half the jurors' mouths, deterring them from wanting to reward Paul's behavior by giving them the win. The jury seemed to very split, so it was going to be a very close vote if Paul made it to the end. I mean, I think Paul and Josh are both scum, but at least Agreed. Josh took action while Paul was behind a closed door being a wuss. Even if he cried after the fact, he would say what he felt to your face. Anyone who can fight with just about every single person in the house and still make Final Three is pretty impressive. Back at the Big Brother house, Josh is deciding who he would want to sit next to in the end if he won the Final H and got to choose who came with him. All season long, Josh was thinking he'd take Christmas, but now Josh was having second thoughts as he realized that Christmas hasn't pissed anybody off in the jury. Josh also realized that his strategy of ratting out Paul's game to every evicted house guest in the goodbye messages might actually be working, so sitting next to Paul at the end could possibly be the smarter decision, even though Paul just played the most dominant game of all time. With this in mind, the first part of the final HOH began. Part one was an endurance cop, and unfortunately for Josh, he wasn't even able to outlast Christmas, who had a broken foot in a competition where they just needed to stand up. Not a problem though, Josh still had part two to redeem himself. Paul ended up winning the first part, guaranteeing their spot in part three, so part two begins between Josh and Christmas. After a long, long part two, Josh bested Christmas, securing his spot in the final part of the HOH. Just barely though. One hour and 39 minutes. Oh my gosh, you beat me. <laughs> With Christmas out of contention for winning the last HOH, Paul revealed to the viewers that they knew they were a lock for the final two, as Paul was either winning the last HOH or Josh was winning it and taking Paul to the end anyways. Paul knew that if they won the comp, they would bring Josh to the end, and Paul thought that the jury hated Josh more than Paul and would respect Paul's game. This is great news for Josh, as this now means that Josh is a lock for the final two as well. So when part three came around, it didn't matter who won, but Paul was by far the favorite as they had won eight competitions throughout the season. However, Josh killed it and destroyed destroyed Paul in part three, winning the competition and becoming the final head of household of the summer. There is no need to continue, which means congratulations to you, Josh. <laughs> This marked the first time the entire season that Paul had been nominated and was sitting in the eviction chairs, but Josh stuck to his word and with a heavy heart, he evicted Christmas, taking Paul with him to the end and solidifying the final two for the season. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone else who doesn't identify as those, we're at the end. The jury of nine went back and forth asking Josh and Paul questions as to why they felt they deserved to be the winner of Big Brother 19. While the jury questioned Paul's tactics, most were unsatisfied with their answers as they felt Paul was not owning up to their game and was lying to them. Josh, on the other hand, took each question in stride, laying out his strategy in plain view, not hiding anything, and admitted that he'd pick fights, but he'd do it to your face and not behind your back. As the jurors wrapped up their questions, Paul and Josh gave their closing statements. Paul talked about how they controlled every aspect of the game and dominated physically, socially, and strategically, and that they were sorta of never nominated the whole season. Josh brought up that he was never scared to show how he felt, was straight up about his game and wasn't playing sneaky, and that he was underestimated throughout the entire season as nobody caught on to Josh's game. He may have slipped up a couple times during his speech, but he got his points across. And with that, both of their work was done and their fate was now in the hands of the jury. One by one, the jurors stepped up to vote, and it looked extremely close. It was literally anybody's game. Julia then stepped up and revealed the votes. It takes five votes to win. Christmas voted for Paul. Kevin voted for Paul. Alex voted for Josh. Raven voted for Paul. That's three votes for Paul, one vote for Josh. Jason voted for Josh. Matt voted for Paul. That's four votes for Paul, two votes for Josh. One more vote for Paul and they win. Mark voted for Josh. Elena voted for Josh. Four votes for Paul, four votes for Josh. It all comes down to Cody's vote. Before Cody voted, he said he was gonna stay true to his word, whatever that meant. Cody, who hated Josh, but didn't respect Paul. It was anyone's guess. Julie, it's time to reveal the vote. Cody is the last vote. Congratulations, Josh. You are the winner of Big Brother. Paul and Josh. Josh Martinez, the winner of Big Brother 19. 
Who would have guessed at the beginning of the season that not only would Josh become the winner, but that Cody would cast the deciding vote for Josh to win? I can think back to that day and remember the absolute disbelief and shock and excitement I had watching Josh win. I had just started college and got together a bunch of my friends who didn't even watch Big Brother to watch the finale with me. And some of them still watch to this day. So how funny is it that their introduction to Big Brother was Josh beating Paul in the final two? Speaking of which, poor Paul. Silver medal in back-to-back seasons, losing by one vote each time. It's a nutty circumstance that will probably never happen again, but in the end, this is the story of how Josh Martinez won Big Brother. To wrap things up, let me say this. I'm not here telling you that Josh played a better game than Paul, because that's just not the case. Instead, what I'm telling you is that Josh played to the jury better than Paul did. Paul had all their bases covered to get to the end, but similar to Big Brother 18, Paul still didn't know how to manage a jury the correct way, which is something that Josh figured out and executed on. And it's not even that Josh managed the jury well, he just did what he could to make sure that the jury didn't respect Paul. Little did Josh know, but he likely beats everyone left at the final three, which is a pretty crazy thing to think about. Also, it's worth mentioning that outside a couple of times in the pre-jury phase, Josh was almost never in danger of going home, which is definitely a good thing for Josh's game. A lot of people will say that Paul deserved that win and that Josh is one of the worst winners in the show's history. And while I do think Paul played the hell out of that season, I was so happy to see Josh win. Quite possibly the biggest wild card to ever win the game, Josh brought something to Big Brother that almost nobody else has before. I can't quite put my finger on what it is, but it's something. And it's something that I personally appreciate, even though I know others don't. So, will I keep throwing in Josh jokes in my videos? Absolutely. But know that it's lighthearted and met in good spirits. Josh accomplished what so many others dream about doing, and I'm not going to be one to drag him down for that. So for anyone that watches the challenge and wondered how Josh won Big Brother, I hope I answered your question. It was fun going back to this season that I considered to be the worst of all time, but I think my opinion has changed on it. Maybe it's only my second, or dare I say, even my third least favorite season now. But when you take a step back and look at Big Brother as a show, and you look at it as entertainment, I can sit here and look you right in the eyes and tell you that I was entertained through and through by Josh. And watching him win in the end against Paul was one of my favorite moments in Big Brother. And with that, thank you for watching, and I think it's about time to go watch Josh on the new season of The Challenge. Yeah.